Hey guys, Keith here with Ramshackle Homestead Survival, and I want to tell you a little bit about this Gramsford's Hunter's Axe. I'm in no way trying to sell it, hype it. I'm just kind of telling you the plain facts. I think there's been online a lot of confusion uh, I've seen about how it's built. So today I'm going to show you what it's built for. Stay tuned. If you think about the little Gransford's axe, uh, as you can see, we have a few axes. You don't have to buy an expensive axe. You can find a lot of good axes uh, at yard sales, antique malls. So many vintage axes make excellent axes. But I've always wanted this axe. Uh, finally broke down and bought it. Man, I'm glad I did. Uh, the handle, you see a lot of people complain about how the handle's rough finished. Well, it's rough finished for a reason. That's so if your hands are covered in blood or water or, or whatever, mostly blood though, because this was made to process big game animals as well as being a trail hatchet. But the rough finish keeps your hand from slipping. You can kind of see that. Uh, and mine's a little rougher because it's had some use. Uh, next thing that makes it different than a lot of axes, uh, the profile's a little different. I'll go into a little more detailed photograph of that here in a bit and it has what they call a flailing pole, and I'll explain more about that. But uh, overall, it's about 18 and a half inches, 48 centimeters, and the head on it's about two pounds. And I carry this ax with me everywhere. It is by far, if I'm not doing a big task like uh, beam work or splitting firewood for the home, this is the ax I have. Slides right down to my pack or my haversack. Uh, just a really nice little unit and we're gonna skin a deer with it. This thing is unbelievably sharp. You can see the profile on the ax. It's a little bit narrower than what a normal ax would be. It also has a rounded pole. It's called a flailing pole, and the reason it's built like that is to get between the meat and the hide of a big game animal and kind of give it a thump thump as you're working down, and that will help separate the hide from the meat, and it works really well. Very thought out design. All right, so a lot of people have seen reviews on this axe. Uh, I don't think they even really know why they bought it. But the pole, as I talked about in the intro, is rounded, and this is why it is rounded. Not so much on one of these hides, but like uh, probably what it was made for, like elk, deer, uh, moose. that 
is why the back of the poles are rounded and not squared off. You just walk around a hive. Makes it handy. So there it is, you can totally skin a deer with an axe. Uh, it's about my fourth deer I've skinned with an axe. And this little hunter's axe from Grassford Brooks, it's a $189 axe. It's not a very big axe, but I carry it everywhere. Well worth the money. Uh, no offense, but you can't do this with a folding saw. I can still cut wood with this dude. And the best part about it is, I can come right over here. Even after skinning a deer, you can still make a feather stick and all that other good stuff while you kick back with coffee in your wooden cup. So again, uh, I'm sure a lot of people hate this video. That's fine, uh, but it just is what it is. It's a real thing. That's what the axe was designed for. Uh, and I'm just showing you what it does when it is used in its intended purpose and why it's designed the way it is and all that good jazz. So probably some of you won't follow me because I just skinned a deer with an ax. But for those of you that don't, uh, tell your buddies about it. Hit like and subscribe and be sure and check out everything else we have going on under the Ramshackle logo. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.